It's been a long week and I need a couple stories that make me laugh. So the Alabama National Fair, which I've been a proponent of for a very, very long time. I've been involved in the fair, I think, since I was no older than seven or eight for sure. Because my dad was always really involved with it. We always got his FFA kids and, and they were always in... I mean, fair time was very hectic for us because we would sometimes enter up to 40 or 50 exhibits for different kids that my dad had when he was teaching at Marbury. And I started entering exhibits. I had been in the Scarecrow contest, the Lego contest. Uh, I was in several cooking contests. And of course, you know... Regard, that's just the extra stuff on top of showing, which was always a very busy time for us as well. We always, well, I, I wouldn't say always, but we frequently had livestock animals. We were also showing at the state fair. And so that was always a super busy time for us. I love the fair. It's been a part of my life for basically as long as I can remember. So I don't want anybody to get the idea that I'm anti-fair. I'm, I'm just, you know, poking a little fun at it here. Uh, but the that is going to proceed on track uh, the 9th through the 18th. And they have said that they are going to do this th despite the virus. So they said that they might delay it down the road if it turns out that, you know, there's some kind of big spike in Montgomery or something like that. But they said, as of right now, the Alabama National Fair is going to happen and it is going to happen at its regularly scheduled date. There are, unfortunately, quite a few things that are not going to take place. First of all, they're saying that there will be no events inside Garrett Coliseum. So for those of you that have been to the fair before, they usually have Garrett Coliseum sort of sectioned off by a bunch of curtains and they have several smaller exhibits inside Garrett. They're saying because it's such a big space, this time you're not going to be able to go inside Garrett Coliseum. Frankly, I think being inside Garrett Coliseum, getting coronavirus is probably the least of your worries. Like, I'm, I'm more worried that the biz the building is going to spontaneously collapse on my head than I am that the coronavirus is going to get me. But, you know, I guess it makes sense. It is inside. And, and the thing is, for an outdoor event like the fair, it makes sense for them to not have to cancel it. Uh, maybe at night it's a little more dangerous, but because of the heat and humidity, probably not. Um, now since we also know that the virus probably doesn't live on surfaces, at least not to the extent that we originally thought, or that the, the odds of transmission surface to surface is actually pretty darn low, then that's pretty good and means that the fair rides are probably going to be more or less safe. Uh, these are some precautions that the staff at the Alabama National Fair have issued and just wanted to let everybody know that they are going to be doing some things differently so, of course, I already told you about the Garrett Coliseum thing. They also said that everybody is requir required to wear masks, and the Coliseum staff will provide masks at the door for people without. This one, again, a little bit silly, especially considering you're outside. And it's the fair, so it'll probably be at least 85 degrees or higher the entire time that you're there, because, as you know, in the state of Alabama... Summer lasts from usually early March until mid-November. So October is in the dead middle of summer for us. Uh, it will probably, I mean, maybe it could be cold and drizzly in October. I guess that's technically a possibility, but it seems pretty darn unlikely. I've been living in Alabama my whole life. I don't think I can ever remember a time at the fair where it was legitimately cold. So that seems very unlikely. I don't really see why the mask are going to be necessary considering almost the entirety of the fair takes place outside. Now inside, if you're looking at the exhibits, okay, I get that. If you're in the creative living center, if you're in one of those buildings, all right. Yeah. Masking kind of makes sense to be perfectly honest. I, I would understand why the people in charge of the fair would be in favor of masking then. But even if it is in a crowd, if you're walking down the boardwalk, if you're walking down the, the lanes between the rides there and, you know, uh, getting cotton candy or whatever, do you really need a mask? That just seems ridiculous. Uh, another one that they've done, another change they've made, there will be fewer rides at the fair this year to help with social distancing. Okay. If it's a ride and you're sitting in the same seat that another pair of people sat in just 
two minutes before them and you know that they're not going to have the time or put forth the effort to properly sanitize every single seat after every single person has sat on it, like, do you really think that having less rides so people can be more distant from one another when they're going 65 miles an hour past one another is really going to make a difference? Like, this policy really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me either. Uh, maybe there is a way that it will help. I don't know. Maybe what they're thinking of is there will be more space to walk around ergo because there are less rides taking up space that people can spread out more while they're walking around. Okay, maybe that actually does make a little bit of sense. But I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they reach that conclusion. But on its surface, that one just doesn't really seem to chive with me for whatever reason. Uh, now, this is my favorite one from the Alabama Depart or the, the Alabama News Network. Cleaning crews will regularly disinfect restrooms and surfaces on the fairgrounds. Because they weren't doing that before? And the answer is no. The answer is no, they absolutely were not doing that. They were not sanitizing restrooms <laughs> before. <laughs> I mean, it's the fair. You know what it is. You know what it is. And I love the fair, but let's be honest, if you've got to use the bathroom and you're at the fair, you know, may, may the Lord be with you and protect you on that one. <laughs> Coronavirus is the least of your worries when you're using a fair restroom. And I say that as someone that has had to do that quite a few times because I've been at the fair so many times. Um, but you know, that's that's the way that it is. Ultimately, I think this boils down to, guys, life is a calculated risk. If you feel confident enough to go to the fair, and if you are a person that is in his 20s or 30s or even 40s, and you're a relatively healthy person with no underlying conditions, the odds of this thing killing you are actually less, in many cases, than the regular seasonal flu, which is a calculated risk that you take every t single time you step outside your door during flu season. Could the flu kill somebody that's 18 or 25? Yeah, it could, theoretically. But the odds are so astronomically low that that would happen that we don't look at this. And for people in that category, the coronavirus is actually less deadly than the flu. And so we, we almost act as though people don't have agency. Like that if the fair opens, oh, everyone must go to the fair. Like, they can't stop themselves, regardless of their own thoughts or their own will or the fact that they know that they have lung problems or asthma, that they will just go to the fair and risk their lives regardless. People have the ability to make their own decisions. All of life is a calculated risk. Even if you stay indoors, that in and of itself is a calculated risk. You know, maybe a bus drives through your house. It's unlikely, but it could happen. And it could kill you even there. The entirety of our life is a calculated risk. We have to do a risk versus reward analysis. And if somebody wants to go out to the fair and they know that there is a, and I literally crunched the numbers on this last week if you want to check it out, they know that they are in the demographic where there is a 0.00033% chance that if they get the virus, not if, you know, the overall odds of maybe I catch it, maybe I don't, if after they already have the virus, that is their odds of dying? I don't think that person is being at all unreasonable going like, you know what, screw it, I'm going to the fair. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Th that's a perfectly rational conclusion to go to. If you're somebody that is very likely to die from coronavirus, if you're over the age of 85 and have severe lung damage, well, then regardless of what precautions that are being taken here, even if they did all of these things and actually did them well, there's no reason you should be going out to the fair. And so that that's why I think that the bending over backwards and doing a lot of things that frankly don't make a whole lot of sense is just silly because we act as though individuals do not have agency and are incapable of making wise decisions on their own. And ultimately, it's the same thing with the school debate. I'm not going to rehash this. I'm just saying that. But when we're talking about calculated risk, which is more dangerous? coronavirus or the fair itself? I mean, let's be honest. 
are you risking your life more going out there when, regardless of your age, this virus has a 99.96% survival rate? Are you risking your life more doing that, knowing that virus is out there and you could potentially catch it? Or are you risking your life more getting on a ride that goes 65 miles an hour that was put together in four hours by a meth head directly before scarfing down an entire stick of fried butter? Like, that is a far more hazardous event to your health than the possibility of catching coronavirus. So if people are willing to go to the fair, man, you're already taking your life into your own hands. And I say that affectionately because I like the fair. But I'm just saying, let's be perfectly honest about that. That risk is already baked into the fair, regardless of whether the coronavirus is out there floating around or not. It's just, it's just a fact of life. So all of this ridiculousness, I don't think that it's actually something that is justified or warranted. People are going to make their own decisions. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, Woke Brigade.